Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Ask the Cheese Man, where you uh, can ask all of your home cheese making questions. Hopefully, it's working okay, and if someone can give me an in indication, uh, that would be fantastic. My phone is silent. Excellent. <laughs> that uh, that will fix everything. So, just checking if. YouTube's getting this. Yes, all good. Fantastic. Um, yes, cheese, fantastic. Yeah, okay. So great. So we've got some um, people on the chat already, which is quite active, which is fantastic. Um, okay, so a uh, couple of hellos, first of all, obviously. So uh, Joy, g'day Joy. We've got MJ, we've got Anna, we've got Brendan, Matthew, and Callum, Music Heels from Greece. Uh, we've also got Nolan, G'day, uh, Jean-Francois, Magic to Gathering, um, Susie, Helen, William, G'day to all of you. Um, I'll uh, kick off the show, seeing we seem to have uh, quite a few people on already. Well, G'day, Curd Nerds. G'day, Curd Nerds. Well, G'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. And we're back. Okay, so this is episode 56. And 56, I never thought we'd reach 56, but episode 56 of Ask the Cheese Man. Uh, and we wouldn't be able to do these things if it wasn't for our um, financial patrons. So a big shout out to uh, Sarah, Richard and Tim, who are patrons, uh, who signed up this month uh, to support the show. Um, okay, so lots of people on there, which is fantastic. Um, just a few updates as far as the cheese world goes. Um, the marbled cheddar. Uh, I finished that off. Um, the video I've just got to do the the voiceover track uh, for it. So all of the uh, editing's been done except for the voiceover, and then we'll get that up for this weekend, which will be great. Um, planning on doing a Fontina taste test uh, that'll be coming soon. Um, Kim and I are planning a raclette party, so that'll be interesting. Hopefully, we'll be able to film the participants of the party. Um, eating not only our raclette cheese, but she's um, going to go and buy this fancy little doodaddy raclette thing. So that'll be interesting as well. Let's look out for that. Uh, I also intend on doing a video about coconut yogurt for all those out there who are um, lactose intolerant. So uh, watch for that soon. And don't forget, as always, you can uh, super chat during the show if you want to do any, uh, if you want to financially support the show. Uh, just as a one-off, um, and um, it helps, helps, well, helps everything, keep, helps keep a roof over my head. So that's always good for a laugh. Okay, now let's talk about, uh, before we talk about cheese, which I want to see some people are straight off the bat there, um, I'm going to talk about headaches, just for a second, only just a second. Um, for those who don't know, I've got this condition called New Daily Persistent Headache Syndrome. Uh, look it up, it's in Wikipedia, it's a well-known condition uh, that I get a daily headache. Now, the last few shows, oh, I've been skipping one every fortnight, and that's because I've been waking up with a massive killer headache. I still have a headache right now, but uh, it's not as severe as what it was, say, last Wednesday, where I was bedridden for half the day. So I'm actually going into hospital uh, at the start of April for six days um, to get a procedure done. Nothing so, nothing so dramatic as cutting my brain open or anything like that, but uh, to have a whole bunch of IV um, medication, um, so I've got to stay in the hospital for six days. Uh, so I'll let you know when the, uh, the show won't be on. Um, we will be skipping one because of that. Uh, and then I'll have uh, a couple of weeks recovery. Um, after that, uh, and I'll see how we go um, as far as recovery goes. Hopefully, after the procedure, the um, uh, there won't be any pain anymore. Um, so my um, 
my neurologist says. So, uh, yeah, it's not a nerve block. It's a whole bunch of IV drugs. So, um, so we'll get on with the show, shall we? We'll stop talking about that. Anyway, I uh, just thought I'd get it out there. Um, okay, first question of the day is from uh, Jean-Francois. Hi, Gavin. I did make feta, but it's too salty. Would marinating it in olive oil reduce the salt? Uh, no, there's one way to make your feta less salty. That's to let it sit in milk for an hour. So hopefully that uh, that helps. It actually pulls some of the salt out of the cheese. Uh, g'day to Sonia. Brendan said, I made a Yalesburg that ended up uh, clory form blowing. It blew up while brining. Uh, made whey ricotta from the whey before it blew. Uh, would it be prudent to dispose of the ricotta? Um, probably not, Brendan, because the ricotta's heated to such a high temperature, it would have killed all the bacteria anyway. Um, and that's unfortunate your cheese blew up. Was it because it was uh, raw cheese, uh, raw milk, sorry? That probably does it. Um, pasteurized homogenate, or pasteurized milk really does. Um, blows up like that i found uh tends to be raw milk that you get uh and it's contaminated okay um uh, matt and shah says hello and dj g'day and paul says kefili cheese do you wash it every day for the first three weeks of it being in the cheese cave uh paul i tend to because it uh tends to grow mold very fast um, the mould seems to like the saltiness because, you know, you do that salt rub between every pressing. Um, but, yeah, I do wash it down or uh, if the mould's not too bad, then I just rub it down with a, 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 a just a dry cloth um, lint-free, so that should be fine. Okay, Patrick says, Hi, Gavin, love your channel. Quick question. After maturing, let's say, of a cheddar, can you cut it into pieces and backpack it into portions? Uh, can you keep aging at 13? Uh, Patrick, yes, you can. You can once it's matured to your liking. Um, obviously, keep a little sneaky bit out for yourself. Um, I usually backpack half of mine and let it keep maturing, unless it's one of those cheeses that that doesn't benefit from any maturing, like, say, Havarti or, um, or Edam. I just put them in the normal kitchen fridge at 4 degrees, so it slows the any growth down really fast um and thanks for all your best wishes everybody uh that's fantastic really do appreciate it it helps um Shyam says hi gavin i'm a massive fan from the uk how do i get into cheese making i hope you feel better soon uh how do you get into cheese making um usually it's either go and jump jump on a course at your local um community center there's lots of um Lots of small cheese making courses uh, for people who want to share their knowledge. Um, some are expensive, some are not. Um, but yeah, a course is usually the best way because it's it's all well and good. I won't say that. I, I sell kits, right, as well. So it's all well and good, good getting a kit. But if you're anxious or nervous about even starting or beginning, it's best to go and get uh, go and get some advice. Uh, from professionals to start with so having a course uh, attending a course at your local community center or what have you that's always the best way um and i'm sure um being in the uk there's lots of little courses that sort of stuff um but second best option is a kit or go and watch all my youtube videos there's another one okay um brendan fingers crossed hope it works yeah too right mate thanks uh william have you ever thought about trying your hand at a Oh, I'm so good at these um, words. Moltenaro al, al <laughs> Tartufo. No, I have not. I don't even know what that means. But uh, I'll go and check it out after the chat. Oh, before I go much further, um, YouTube have put in a new feature for live streams. So you see the chat window here that everybody's talking at? That actually becomes available now. Um, on the the repeat so when the when this video goes into archive which is straight after the show basically 
the live chat actually works. So you'll actually see where the comments, where, where you see it now on your, if you're using a browser on a desktop, you actually get to see the live chat. And I think it only works for desktop at the moment. I'm not sure. It might work for mobile. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Super Chat now works for mobile as well. Anyway, that's YouTube update. Anyway, back to the cheese. I'm all over the place today. Um, Magic to gather. Oh, where are we? Sorry, Nolan. Nolan said something. Hello, Mr. Gavin. I have a question all the way from Costa Rica. Uh, can I use raw milk and pasteurized milk to make cheese together? And if so, should I add calcium chloride? Thank you very much. Um, yes, you can use raw milk and pasteurized milk together if you wish. Say, for instance, if you've got some raw goat's milk and all you've got is pasteurized cow's milk, yep, you can mix them together, no problems at all. I've done that before. But I always add calcium chloride, um, especially when you've got any sort of heat-treated milk, whether that be um, home heat-treated like um, low-temperature long-hold um, that you've done yourself uh, or commercially um, processed pasteurized milk. So always add a little bit of calcium chloride um, that matches the same amount as the rennet. Okay. Magic the Gathering. Hi, Gavin. Love your show. It's the best and very interesting. I'm in Australia on holiday in the Gold Coast. Well, welcome, and I hope you're enjoying the Gold Coast. It's a lovely place. Uh, um, Kim was talking to my sister, <laughs> who lives close to the Gold Coast, and she says it's raining. So <laughs> hopefully the weather's okay. Um, Amin says, hi, Gavin. Can we put cheddar and gouda in the fridge at four degrees for maturation? Um, we are from Angelia, and we love your videos. Um, probably a little bit too cold, actually, because uh, those cheeses will go dormant those uh, if it's too cold. So you won't get the full flavour development um, as you would, would with a normal cheese fridge, um, say, like having them at 13 degrees Celsius. For those two cheeses so it'll slow it down probably take a lot lot longer okay uh matt and shah says i have gruyere ready that has eyes developing should i wax it or vac pack uh will the vac pack ruin the eyes um depends do you want the eyes or do you not want the eyes it's up to you uh if you vac pack it it will squish the eyes down uh, but if the cheese is producing gas, it'll puff the bag up a little bit uh, and the eyes will keep growing. Um, if you wax it, uh, it's a fairly good chance that it will split the wax, so I would backpack it. And because there's CO2 development, it'll work anyway, so should be fine. Okay, um, moving right along. Jeff says, hi, Gavin, can I make brine at a leftover whey? Most definitely you can. Brine is one, uh, sorry, whey is one of the best brine bases to use because it's already pH balanced with your cheese. So you won't get that iron exchange, calcium ion exchange, which makes some cheeses uh, go slimy on the outside. You may have experienced that if you've used ever brined a cheese before. Tends to happen more often than not with uh, feta, um, and oh, well, any cheese you put in brine, feta usually it usually happens. Um, yeah, the the way is pH balanced to your cheese, so I would still add a little bit of vinegar to it, um, just to get the acidity um, down or up. Yeah, with down in pH. Um, so a little bit of vinegar, probably a teaspoon to your whey, and uh, you should be right as rain. You don't need to add any calcium because there's heaps of calcium in the whey already, as in calcium chloride. Okay, moving right along. Um, Jean-Francois says, uh, I started a kefili on the 2nd of the 3rd. Okay, is that the 2nd of March? Seems legit. Um, aged in the fridge and it is firm, not sticky, but small blue mould. Tried to wipe with brine, but it's not working. Would it be okay to eat in two weeks when it's ready? Yes, it will be. Um, that blue mould will be persistent, little bugger, and keep coming back time and time again. You wipe it daily and it keeps coming back. What you can do is add a little bit of vinegar to your simple brine solution 
Uh, side use, uh, say, half a teaspoon of vinegar in your brine solution if you're only making a cup of simple brine when you wash. And that'll dampen down the mould. That'll kind of kill it off, which is good. Okay. Um, book, Alt D. Book of D. Yeah, okay. Uh, I tried making mozzarella using your quick mozzarella recipe, but found it too creamy like mas mascarpone, more than chewy. Did I not stretch enough? Yes. So the more you stretch it, the more mouthfeel it has. It doesn't feel creamy anymore. Uh, so you've got to make sure that um, when you do those three microwave zappings, that the curd is actually hot enough to stretch. You should be able to stretch it above your head like that, at least. Um, and then you'll find that it's stretchy enough and it has a more chewy texture. Uh, if you want to go for... Um, well, cow's milk mozzarella, then um, then try the other recipe that I've put up on my um, um, on my web on the, the what's it called the YouTube's you know the channel wherever. Okay, um, uh, William says a sardinian pecorino that's pierced with truffle sauce. Oh, that'd be amazing! I've actually got a little pack packet of truffles from something I can't remember what it was for. Little fine. Bits. Uh, I was thinking of popping that in a cheese that I was going to mature, so I think that'd be really nice too. Uh, Ryan, hi Gavin, just getting into cheese making from Maryland, USA. Your videos are great. Keen, keep them coming. Thanks, mate. You're most welcome. Brizzy Girl, the new live chat feature is available on mobile, and Super Chat has always been available on mobile. Thanks, Brizzy Girl. Um, Kim's just popped the link in there. Um, Five of the best cheese making courses in the UK. So I hope that helps all of you English types, um, or Scottish, or Welsh, uh, or North, North Irish. Um, where are we? The Jamal. Um, hello, cheese man. Thanks for all your tutorials from Algeria. Thank you very much. Uh, VT Quarter, love your videos. Uh, when making feta with cow's milk, can you vary the amount of lipase? In order to get a milder flavoured cheese, I'm using a mild lipase, but it's still quite strong. Yeah, so back off um, on the lipase. I think normally I, I think that first recipe had an eighth of a teaspoon, if I remember rightly. Um, reduce it by half, so go one sixteenth of a teaspoon, uh, using some mini measuring spoons, and that should work just fine. If you still think it's a little bit too strong, back off even further to a uh, one thirty second of a teaspoon. Um, uh, Fab Luca says, I'm trying to make mozzarella cheese with pasteurized milk, 3.5. This is not working. Is this normal? Um, shouldn't be uh, normal because that's the, that's the amount of fat. I, I use um, pasteurized milk in our classes uh, and it's about 3.4, 3.6% fat. Works every time. Now, when you just a, a word of um, encouragement for those would be quick mozzarella makers, uh, when you're using lipase, you need to add a little bit more rennet. So, if your rennet um, is a little bit weak, always add a little bit more, say 20 25% more rennet um, for that quick mozzarella. Uh, and it'll work like a treat every time because if you add lipase it tends to dampen down the coagulation reaction uh, that uh, rennet has with casein um okay um jed says like your chair thought you said like my hair there to start with oh, it's lovely isn't it wash with our homemade soap uh <laughs> amin says thank you we are from algeria not algeria <laughs> oh sorry sorry mate uh, Jeffrey, hi, how are you? Um, Nick, all of the cheese you've tried, what is your least favourite? Um, least favourite? Is there such a thing? Um, I do really enjoy cheese. Funny about that. Uh, it's my passion. I'm a certified curd nerd. Um, one that, uh, and I made it myself, and I wasn't too happy with it, and that was St. Marcelin. If you go and have a look at the taste test for St. Marcel, and you'll see me making all sorts of funny faces because it was a bit rank. It was overripe. Um, not the best cheese on the planet. 
Uh, I should have uh, tasted it about two weeks before I did. Uh, and, uh, yeah, but that was my fault. St. Marcelin in the wine, naturally made. <clears throat> and if you can get it fresh in France, tastes nice. Uh, not like my St. Marcelin. So it was my own um, uh, misfortune. Okay, um, Jamel says something I can't read. Sorry. Um, NKY, uh, who I believe is Jason. Hi, Gavin. What is the importance of flipping G cheese? Jesus. Cheeses during the curing process. I get forgetful once in a while and don't do it uh, every week at times. Uh, yeah, look, it is important. Um, and having said that, I forget to. Oh, I forget to turn my cheese occasionally. Um, but I do manage to get there at least once a week, flip them over. What it does, it it uh, helps it ripen evenly. It helps the fats distribute evenly through the cheese as it breaks down. Because remember, cheese making is basically controlled rotting of milk. That's what it is. You know, if we're going to be frank here, that's exactly what cheese making is. Rotting of, controlled rotting of milk. So we want to control it, and as the uh, the fats and proteins break down, they turn into the lovely flavours. Now they need to be distributed through the cheese. Uh, probably not so important for home cheese makers because the the cheese wheel is only very small that we do. Probably more important for bigger cheeses, um, but uh, yeah, important nonetheless. So if I forget, two once every two weeks is fine, especially if they're back packed. Um, if, the, if you're trying to get a natural rind, whew, those moulds will get away from you and uh, you'll get something like my ricotta, pecorino ricotta salada, which uh, you would have seen the video of, uh, that I bought back from uh, uh, the gates of hell and it's come back and it looks okay still. Um, Jed, how did I get into cheese making? Well, that's a long story, Jed. Um, if you buy my book, Keep Calm and Make Cheese, uh, there's a whole chapter dedicated to why I got into cheese making. Uh, Freedom Music, hello, hello. Uh, Cross, how are you? Uh, why was the cheesemonger lopsided? Because he only had one stilton. <laughs> That's crazy. That is dreadful. Okay, thanks for answering, Gavin. Uh, watching from Kenya, by the way. Uh, Jambo Sunner. There you go. That's my only bit of Swahili that I know. Um, I actually went to Kenya once in 1983. I went to Mombasa uh, on a Navy ship. Okay, let's continue on. It's the trials and tribulations of Gav. Where am I up to? Okay, John says, G'day, Gavin. I was wondering if you ever heard of Barata and Kefla... Kefla Teary, Kefla Teary, that's right. Uh, yes, burrata is basically a mozzarella with a little parcel inside, a little cream cheese parcel or cream, really rich cream parcel inside. Very delicious. Easy to make. Um, and you can use the quick mozzarella recipe, but you've got to kind of eat it the same day. And Kefla, uh, Kefla Teary is a Greek hard cheese, which... Um, uh, which is aged uh, for quite a long time, and it tastes amazing. And that's what you use to make saganaki out of. Now, I did put uh, put a little um, uh, post up on the community part of the channel saying that I was making keflatiri, but uh, headaches got the worse of me, so I didn't make cheese that day, and I opted to make a marble cheddar because I looked at my list, and people have been asking for that for a long, long time. Uh, but yeah, it's on my list to do. It's just been pushed down one or two, so we're going to have a go at that. Um, Cheyenne, thanks, Kim. That is brilliant. Ah, uh, oh, there's a play on words. Uh, Gon says, greetings from Chile. Hello, mate. How are you? Melissa, um, what's a good cheese for a long brunch? Mm, oh, I would say for a brunch. One of my favourite cheeses is halloumi. So um, some pieces of halloumi that have just been fried in olive oil um, with a bit of uh, watermelon 
and some rocket. I tell you what, there's nothing like it for a nice long brunch. Anyway, uh, Gail from Worcester, uh, Massachusetts. Love your videos. Just a quick hi. Hi, Gail. Um, Matt, I made your broomy goat. Oh, hang on a minute. I made the bloomy goat recipe you shared, and it's amazing. Uh, thank you very much, Matt. It's that's the one that I that's the recipe I created myself. So that's my own creation. I cobbled it together from about oh, nearly three or four different recipes, and I came up with that one. It worked first go, so I was very very happy. Uh, it's loosely based on. Uh, Valance or Valence, however you say it, um, but without the pyramid. So, yeah, really, really nice cheese. Um, Dennis says cheers. Cheers back to you. Um, John, I almost forgot about doing a new Pyrenees cheese. The last one is from 2010. Um, you mean video? Uh, which is... The Pyrenees cheese that I made was in the Osu Irati style, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, which is uh, the mountain range between France and Spain. Uh, they kind of make that sort of cheese style there, but it's made from, if I remember rightly, sheep's milk or ewe's milk. Um, so I'll have to hit up my, um, my goat's, uh, my sheep's milk supplier, young... Um, uh, Graham, and uh, we'll see what I can come up with. Uh, Jeffrey, um, I love your videos. Not always able to watch live. Yeah, that's a, a lot of people um, can't watch it live. This is the best time we found. Kim and I have found. We've mucked around doing two shows in one day. We find this one has the most attendance. Even Australians can come on this one if they're watching it on the train or something like that. Um, but... Uh, Europe gets a little bit of it, and so does um, uh, the Americas as well. Okay, Helen, do you sell merchandise? I love your T-shirt. Uh, funny you should say that, Helen. Yes, we do. I do have a little merch store. Uh, don't make a lot from it, but um, because I like the shirt, I put the design up. Uh, it's on Cafe Press, and Kim will pop the link in there somewhere. And uh, it'll also, same design on the lovely cup. Okie dokie. Moving right along. Um, oh, sorry. Matt and Shah said, uh, did you get rid of the red uh, bacteria infection you had? Yes. Okay. So what I did was um, break out the trusty white vinegar spray bottle and gave the inside of the cheese fridge a good spray and a wipe down with a nice clean cloth. And that seems to have um, helped out uh, tremendously. Uh, and that's basically all I do. I don't go full on, um, uh, full on, uh, what's that stuff called? Bleach. So, um, no, white vinegar, no problems at all. Easily gets rid of mold um, and uh, doesn't come back for at least a few months. So that's what I had to do. Um, mind you, the cheese fridge does um, smell a little bit at the moment because of the raclette in there producing all those lovely... Um, Stinky sock aromas because it's a, um, a mold ripened cheese, a, a, sorry, a washed rind cheese. Um, so that's a little bit smelly in there at the moment. But I'm hoping to fix that up today. Um, and if I think the rind's ready, I'll backpack the rest of the, um, the raclette and we'll go forward from there. Okay. Um, Jed says, which cheese is hardest to make? Um, I would say the one that took the most time would be Wensleydale because um, you actually have to break you kind of how do you do it uh, you would have seen there's a Wensleydale video on the channel go and have a check that one out and you'll see that there's a lot of procedures in fact the um, marble cheddar one was technically challenging uh, that I've done and the videos should be released this weekend technically challenging but not the hardest to make i've made cheddar before um but it was controlling two pots at the same time well, i can't even stir the same yeah two pots at the same time because i had to split the milk into two very exciting so it's going to be a great video 
Okay. Uh, Melissa, can you tell me what is uh, a good cheese for fondue? Well, traditionally, a fondue is made with Gruyere. So that's the best cheese. Um, and sometimes they also put in a little bit of uh, raclette. But raclette's more is better known as a melting cheese that they put on top of potatoes and cornicons and cornichons, or I think that's how you pronounce it, little green pickles. Um, but, yeah, they've known to put a little bit of raclette in there, which are two famous Swiss cheeses. Okay. Um, uh, RS, hi, Galvin. I thought it was Gavin. Anyway, uh, how you doing, mate? I'm good, RS. Uh, DeFace Mac. Oh, you're so funny. Right. Um, Jamel, good night. I will finish your live tomorrow. Oh, good night to you. Uh, Matt and Shah, what's your biggest staple cheese? One you like to keep around often? Well, um, since I've been making the cheese making videos, there really hasn't been a staple cheese because I, um, I'm making new cheese just about every week. Um, but one of my favourites, of course, is uh, is kafili because it's so simple to make. It only takes three weeks. Uh, another favourite that we like here is queso fresco with, you know, things put in it, whether it be chilies or cranberries. It's always a lovely cheese to make. Um, so, yeah, so I, we do make the I make those more often than not. Um but uh, I'm actually going to remake the Kafili video. I'll just write that down. Somebody asked me the other day. Um, because the video itself is actually very old. Um, doesn't have the, you know, like I put the instructions and the titles and all the steps and all that sort of stuff. And the ingredients doesn't have any of that. It's really dark. So um, I'm going to re, not redo that footage i'll make another kafili and go from there i think that'd be nice okay uh joy says gavin i noticed my smellier cheese with red molds seem to melt much better um i like it do you know the reason why this may happen i'm not complaining just wondering oh yes good question um it's because those red molds tend to break down the proteins better uh than any others so um, although other cheeses, mold ripened cheeses like um, uh, blue and uh, and any of the white mold cheeses um, will melt, um, but the red mold cheeses tend to melt a lot better. So do the Alpine ones, um, Gruyere, um, uh, Raclette, of course, that's an Alpine cheese, uh, Emmental, um, all those sorts of Alpine height treated um cheeses seem to work a lot better they melt better and they actually really taste better too um okay cheese with wine yes i love cheese with wine um uh, demon queen would it be possible to make a lactose and gluten-free cheese uh yes i've already done that so if you pop over to the channel and i don't know if kim's doing links at the moment i haven't seen her for a while um uh, pop in the link for the lactose-free cheese. That's also gluten-free. There was no gluten in the cheese at all. In fact, many cheeses don't have gluten in them. Um, very rare to find that. Uh, and it's a lovely little kafili that I made in that style. Um, and it tastes okay. And there's actually a taste test video as well with my daughter who is uh, lactose intolerant. And she loved it. Okay, Brian says, currently setting a Swiss wheel out at room temperature for holes, or other known as eyes. I have a small dark spot that appears to be under the surface. Should I be concerned? Um, if it's a brown spot, no, shouldn't be concerned at all. Uh, those sorts of cheeses tend to get uh, a bit of a brownie kind of rind on them. Same as uh, Gruyere does that as well, just the way the cheese that happens as it matures. Uh, if you start seeing things on top of the the rind, obviously wipe them off. Okay, Martin says, um, hey Gavin, what culture 
specifically did you use for your queso chihuahua? Okay, good question. I would have to go back and check the video. <laughs> That's why I make them. Um, it would either be the Mad Millie Mesophilic. I've only got two Mesophilics at the moment. Oh, no, I've got another one now. Um, it will either be the Single Use Sachet or it will be Sacco's MO30, which contains uh, Lactobacillus Lactus subspecies Lactus and Lactobacillus subspecies Cremorus. So those two bacteria um, were used in that cheese. Okay, uh, NKY, oh, nope, there we go. Farty, yes, it does melt. Uh, Jean Francois says, Have you ever tried to make epoise? Epoise? Oh, my partner like it. I would like to try and make it, but no ideas where to start. Uh, yeah, that's on my list as well. Apparently, it's a fairly smelly sort of cheese, but uh, if Kim can handle a smelly cheese fridge for a couple of weeks, then I'm sure we can make it. John um, says, Hi there from Greece. My question is, is it better to make a Parmesan cheese in a vacuum bag or without it? Yeah, see, that's the problem with Parmesan is normally, and you've probably seen it on videos and documentaries if you're a bit of a cheese nerd like me, or curd nerd, sorry, if you're like me, then you would have watched it, just about every video on YouTube about cheese making. And you see the Parmesans are made wheels that bigger than bigger than the screen. Um they're about 60 kilos usually, and obviously they develop a very good rind, nice and easy, uh, and they don't backpack anything. But however, we don't have that luxury as home cheesemakers because if we leave a Parmesan wheel about a kilogram or one, one and a half kilograms uh, to form a natural rind, uh, over 12 months, you'll find the whole cheese dries out and it's actually rock hard, and it's only good for grating and when you do grate it, you grate half your knuckles off. Done that before. Um, so I tend after a month to um, let it develop a natural rind just for a month in a ripening box, making sure you turn it um, daily or every couple of days and wipe off any mould. And uh, basically then uh, I vacuum pack it from there and then it tends to develop the normal Parmesan flavour uh, very nice indeed. Okay, William, uh, do you think it would be possible to make cheese in a sous vide immersion circulator using a thin steel pot inside a insulated circulation chamber? Yes. In fact, Brendan, who was on the chat before, I don't know if he's still there, he swears by using a sous vide, and that's what he does. Um, he has his milk pot. Inside another big water bath, puts the sous vide in the water bath, not in the milk. Don't put it in your milk. Put it in the water bath and sets the temperature and the milk comes up with the temperature and stays there. Works like a treat, apparently. Um, I just haven't got around to doing that method before. So, um, uh, but yeah, a lot of people do it now and it's uh, really good. Um, Melissa says, I'm from Springfield, Ohio. Well, welcome. Oliver, g'day. Cot. Colton Top Gun, hello. Um, okay, bit of chitty chat there. Let's move on. Uh, Lucas says, how far behind am I here? Oh, no, I'm spot on. Um, RS, sorry, typo, Galvin. No, 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 Gavin. Um, Oliver said, hey, Gavin, if you could meet yourself when you first started making cheese, what advice would you give yourself? Um, that, uh, that's a bit of a time travel, um, paradox. Um, I would actually say to myself, why didn't you start making cheese earlier? You clown. Um, and why didn't I start making cheese when I was a kid? Um, uh, when I lived on a dairy farm, we had access to raw milk all the time. I just wasn't interested. Um, I suppose you've got to get that, uh, spark of inspiration from somewhere. And mine was when we wanted to know what was in our food. Whether we could make it better, we started growing a lot of our own food. We got some chickens um, to provide us with some um, cage-free eggs uh, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and we planted heaps of fruit trees, uh, which are all coming to fruition now. And, um, yeah, I wanted to make cheese. So that was just 
Should have done a lot earlier because it's so much fun. Really is addictive. Um, if I haven't made cheese for like two weeks, I kind of get a twitch and, you know, that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, and, and you get withdrawal symptoms. And either you want to go and eat some cheese, which gives you the incentive to go and make some more. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, that's the advice. And the other piece of advice was don't worry so much about mould. Mould's not such a bad thing. It does amazing things to cheese. Sometimes not so amazing, but they still taste great. And I've never met a cheese that I couldn't eat. Anyway, um, there's a bit of advice. Um, Brendan, um, I had a small two millimetre wind inset in two or three cheeses at one point. I don't know where they came from. The fridge seals are solid, no gaps. They were mostly live, but slow moving. Oh, that's lovely. I took all the cheese out, cleaned the fridge out. They're gone. I've not come back since. I don't know where they came from. What are my thoughts? Goodness me, I don't know. Maybe maybe they hatched from your cheese. There's a thought. A bit scary. Um, maybe it was a cheese mite fly, if that exists. I don't look, I don't know. Um, we'll see. Um, Aaron says a shop in Adelaide is going to carve up a 400 kilogram provolone on Friday. I want to be there and try and video it for you. That would be fabulous, Aaron, and just shoot through the link. Um, and what I can do is, uh, pop it up on the, on the next live chat, you know, like I do pop up videos occasionally, uh, and, uh, and show everybody. That'd be pretty cool. Okay. Kim says she's still here <laughs> and watching me. Brett, my favourite cheese is Double Gloucester with chives. Yum. Yes, it is. Uh, I've made a video on that, and it's actually called Cotswold is the cheese type. So there is a Cotswold video which has chives and dried onions. Very, very delicious. Brett also says, have you ever tried mushroom cheese or cashew cheese? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, but I do intend on making some cashew cheese sometime this year. And uh, give that a go. Uh, Jason says, do you have Limburger cheese on the to-do list? Yes, I do. Um, Brenda says, sous vide works like a treat. Uh, Zami says, love the show. Thank you. Felix, how do you keep the milk at the right temperature and get it so low in the first place? Well, it does a trick. No, it's not really. It's so simple. Um, Kim, if you can pop up the link to how to heat your milk. Um, there's a video on that, and it tells you all the tics, tips and tricks on how to make, uh, to get your temperature and how to control it, um, using the method I use anyway. And I actually give a, uh, some advice on some of the other methods that you can use as well. Okay. Um, Rob says, where is he reading the questions from? Uh, from the live chat that's in the window, that way. That's where all the questions are from everybody. Um, if you're on a browser, then, um, they'll be down the bottom. Oh, sorry. On the right hand side, I think, um, on a mobile device, they should be flowing across your screen. Um, okay. Uh, Sansu, Sansu Fireman. Uh, when you say the milk must rest, is it resting with the heat on or off? Uh, please touch on the flame versus double boiler. Thanks, buddy. Yes, when the milk is resting any time, the heat is off. So let me just get this straight so everybody gets it. Okay, when I heat up the milk initially to the target temperature of whatever it is, usually about 30 to 34 degrees Celsius, which is between 86 and 92 Fahrenheit off the top of my head. That was a calculation. I've, I've just heated up the milk with my little double boiler pot. And then I turn the heat off. And rarely do I turn the heat back on until after I've cut the curd. So for nearly two hours, the milk keeps its heat from the steam that comes off the little pot. So that works. And Kim's just put up the link. So have a look at that. Um, and that'll answer all your questions about heating milk. But you can use a sous vide water bath. That works fine. Keeps the milk at perfect temperature by putting your pot of milk into the water bath. Don't put your sous vide into the milk. You'll burn it. You'll burn out the sous vide as well. Okay. Um, Matt and Charles says, does your wife get sick of cheese? 
does she help make it? Um, well, uh, she does never get sick of cheese, <laughs> which is good because I think I married a mouse. Um, and does she help make it? No, she sings in the background when I uh, She's in her office doing stuff, helping run the small business that supports us as well. Um, and uh, typically on a cheese making day, she pops in every so often, has a look, um, and uh, I think pops off again. So, no, she doesn't help. Sometimes she does. If I have to run an urgent errand and I'm halfway through stirring or flipping during um, cheddaring or something like that, uh, then Kim lends a hand, but only for one or two steps. But uh, that's on a very rare occasion. But she loves to eat the cheese, as I do as well. Anyway. Um, uh, Marshall says, will you do a video on a funky cheese like Epi's? Ep, 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 I can't even say the word. Um, yeah, it's on the list. It's, everything's on the list. Um Pray Mystery says, how do, you, how do you use blue cheese in a lasagna? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, it makes a very sharp um, lasagna, mind you. Um, but it's best for a blue cheese sauce. Really, I love blue cheese sauce, like a, like a cheese sauce, and have a little bit on a steak. It is absolutely fantastic. It, um, it's one of my favourite sauces for a steak. Anyway. Uh, Brizzy girl, you're a bit tongue-tied this morning, Gav. Yes, indeed, I have a headache. It's not helping any at all. Um, and thanks, Kim, for that link. That's fantastic. Brett says, Cotswold, we call it Cromwell here, I believe. Probably, yes. I think Cromwell uh, cheese is exactly the same. It's just a double Gloucester with bits in it, um, chives, and, um, uh, chives and onions. Okay. Um, uh, Lowell's says, how much does cheese cost in Euro? I don't know, I don't live in Europe. Um, you'll have to ask one of the people from Europe in the chat. Um, a question from Donna. Uh, can I just, can just about any container with a top and a raised floor be a maturation box? Uh, how do I know what wrappers to purchase for cheese to store? Uh, Donna, yes, you can. As long as the cheese is off the bottom of the plastic pot, tub, whatever you're going to use, uh, as long as it's not sitting in any of the way that drains off, then it will work like a treat. Look, at a pinch, back in the old days, before I had those red boxes or the, the other larger, taller ones with a little plastic mat in it, what I used to do was cut up um, sushi mats or bamboo mats and I used to just put one on top of the other, and that kept the cheese high enough that it wasn't sitting in uh, in way. So that was fine. That was one way I did it. Um, now it's a little bit more sophisticated that I've got um, uh, the uh, plastic mats underneath the cheese, uh, which is good. Okay. Um, Spantum says, why don't you buy milk from the local farm? Unfortunately... In Australia, well, in Victoria anyway, uh, I think most states are the same, uh, it is illegal to buy raw milk from the farm. Uh, it is, the farmer will not only get fined um, because they cannot sell raw milk. Uh, the legislation here in Victoria, they think it's a harmful thing. And it can be if not treated with respect. If you leave raw milk at room temperature, uh, it'll quickly go bad and can be infected by things like listeria, E. coli. Um, so there's some of the bacteria that can make you sick, very sick. Um, however, if you store milk straight out of the cow, chill it down to four degrees Celsius and hold it there until it's processed um, or, or turn into cheese, then it's fine, absolutely. Um, but you need to make the cheese within a few hours um, of milking the animal. Okay, um, Kim, it's great being married to a cheesemaker. Yes, it is. And she's a lovely lady too. I love her to bits. Serious soldier, how do you make Kasu Mazu? Oh, I'm not even going there. Uh, Rob, I love your channel. Got me interested in making cheese. I never knew it was possible to do by yourself. I love your character. You're likable and your videos always lift my mood. 
Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate that a lot. Um, yes, well, it's funny that you can actually make lots of things yourself um, and you can grow lots of things yourself as well. So, um, yeah, and cheese is just one of those things that you can make in your own home. You know, people were making it um, thousands and thousands of years all by themselves um, without uh, all the um, commercially... Um, the commercial facilities that we have today make mass marketing cheese. Um, it's always get good to get back to grassroots. Anyway, Brendan says, I love blue cheese. Brendan, you are a wizard at blue cheeses. I've seen some of your blue cheeses photographs. I am envious of you, mate, because I just haven't quite got the blue cheese knack. Um, I might have a chat to you um, uh, later on. Not today, but... Um, Another time and we'll have a chat about how you do it um, because I'd love some tips on your blue cheese style. Felix, thanks, Kim, yes. Um, uh, Sal, oh, I can't even say, I'm sorry. Good morning, greetings from Germany. Hello, um, or should I say guten tag? Uh, Lols, we're pirates, yes. Have you ever tried making a wine cheese? Uh, that would be uh, Cabria Alvino or Elvino, something like that. A drunken goat. Uh, yes, I have made a grunt drunken goat. And there's a recipe in my cheese making book for it. Charlie, uh, hello, Gavin. Hello, Charlie. How are you? Uh, DLZG. Hi, Gavin. Are you going to make a video with burrata? We'd love to see this. Uh, good idea because I do like burrata. And I'll see if I can use the quick method first. Anyway. Um, Joy says, I like your video and taste test on uh, queso chihuahua. I didn't realise it tasted so cheddary. Sounds like a great cheese to make for cheddar lovers. Thanks for making it. Um, you're most welcome, Joy. Yes, it did. It was very cheddary. Um, and like I mentioned in the taste test, it had the taste of a six-month cheddar at three months. Um, and I know the variation now, the variation, the, the difference, the main difference is when you're stirring the milk after you've cut the curds with queso chihuahua, is you heat the milk up to 39 degrees Celsius. 39? I think so. I can't remember. There's a temperature difference between the two cheeses, that and cheddar. Um, and obviously they make so it do. Um, Jason says, I love your new channel. Don't forget to plug it in. Oh, plug it. Oh, yes. So my I do have a vlog channel, which I try and get a video up at least once a week, if not two times a week. Um, I'm hoping once the headaches are all gone, fingers crossed, um, there'll be a lot more action over there. Uh, it's just search for Gavin Webber Vlog and you'll find it. No problems at all. And uh, I'm trying to get it up to at least a 1,000 um, subscribers because YouTube changed the rules again. So 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours before you can monetize a channel. Well, I'm absolutely fine on this one because I get over 100, no, half a million watch hours per month. No problems at all on this channel. And obviously I'm over 91,000 subscribers, which is um, which is good. I'm, I'm really pleased that there's so many subscribers. Anyway, uh, Brizzy Girl says, um, Gab or Kim, are you on Instagram? Yes, we have an Instagram channel called Little Green Workshops uh, where we show off uh, the stuff we make and uh, workshops and stuff like that. Uh, Radberry, have you ever attempted to make your own wine or spirits? Uh, I've only ever made beer uh, and not I'm not bad at it either, but uh, not so much uh, lately. Uh, what is Kim's favourite cheese? I don't know. Kim, uh, can you answer that? Uh, Michael, hello. Hello to you. Jean says, um, how do you get the sharpest of cheddars? Uh, the sharpest of cheddars is with age. Age makes a sharp cheddar. There's no two ways about it. That's the only way to get a sharp cheddar is time. So the period of maturation determines the sharpness of your cheddar. Serious Soldier, do you have a video on making ricotta? I have videos on how to make whey ricotta, how to make sweet ricotta, how to make ricotta with sheep's what whey left over from sheep's milk. Um, so, yes, 
and thank you, Kim, for popping that link up. Uh, that is actually fantastic. Um, Charlie says, I opened my Monterey Jack. It came out very good, but a little crumbly. How did your cheese come out by brining it? Uh, it was about the same, Charlie. Uh, Monterey Jack uh, tends to be a little bit crumbly when it's homemade. Um, usually that happens because uh, we may stir it a little bit too much. So maybe ease off on the stirring by about 15 minutes and you'll find your cheese will be a little bit less drier and crumbly. But yeah, all the Monterey Jacks that I've made, when you cut them, they do crumble a little bit. Uh, so, and I've tried a few different recipes and it happens every time. So I think that's just the style of cheese, the way it is. Okay. Um, Kim says Cotswold, just out of the blue. I don't know why she said that, but anyway, uh, Nicholas, how old can cheddar be as long as you want it to be? Um, I aged one for a year and it was absolutely fantastic. I've eaten cheddars that are two years old and they have those little calcium lactate crystals in them. And they are absolutely delightful. Um, I've even seen five-year-old cheddars. Uh, pretty hard to get here in Australia, but in the UK, a lot easier to get longer-age cheddars. They are absolutely delicious. Anno says, thanks for the great instructional videos. Best guides on the web by far, as I've seen. Uh, thank you, Anno. And Brizzy Girl, it's her favourite cheese. Okay, Cotswold's her favourite cheese. Right, sorry. Can't remember 10 minutes ago, let alone what I said. Brendan, I'm going to age a cheddar for a couple of years. That is a good idea. Um, in fact, Kim loves all the cheeses that I make. Uh, where do I get my supplies from? Well, funny you should mention that. It's time to wrap up the show. Uh, thank you, Yoshi. Um, Kim will pop the link in for where you can buy all of the kits and supplies here um, in Australia or anywhere we ship internationally, and it always gets there, and it's um, usually fairly quick. Rarely do we have any issues with international shipping. Um, littlegreenworkshops.com.au is the place to go and find all that stuff. Uh, don't forget to um, check out the merch store. Kim will put the link to Cafe Press. Uh, it's just search for Cheese Man TV, and you'll find that. Don't forget at Little Green Cheese, that one there littlegreencheese.com. You'll find a whole bunch of written recipes as well as lots of podcast episodes, uh, which I put on hiatus for the moment, but uh, they will come back, so don't worry about that. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, Patreon. Um, if you want to support the show financially, it's not too late to do a super chat, which is a one-off, or you can uh, support on a monthly basis for as little as $1 US. Uh, and if everybody, all of my subscribers did $1 US, I could do a show every single day. Don't you worry about that. I would too. Um, so there's Kim's put up the link to the Patreon link. Thank you very much, Kim. Uh, appreciate all of your hard work behind the scenes as my moderator slash producer, kicking me in the pants to get these done. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for watching the show once again. And as I always say, without you guys, there wouldn't be a show. There wouldn't be any questions to answer. Uh, so Ask the Cheese Man would be just sit there and watch me do nothing, Cheese Man. But, uh, yeah, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, appreciate everything you do and keep those questions coming in. Thanks for um, a great show, and we'll see you next week. Headaches pending. We'll, hopefully that all starts to settle down. Can't guarantee anything, so I have to go off my medication soon um, to prepare for the procedure. Anyway, uh, for those who didn't catch it, scroll back to the start and you'll see that. Anyway, love yous all. See you later, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well,